Class E airspace, and the E is for everywhere. Class E is rated E for everywhere because Class E is for the streets. And here are five must-know things about Class E. Ho, let go. Numero dos of what else you need to know about Class E. Ho. Not only is she everywhere, you don't necessarily need to talk to anybody. She kind of stuck up like that. You don't have to always get out and talk to her like that. Meaning when you're in this controlled airspace, because Class E is controlled, it's not mandatory that you talk to anyone. It's optional, but it's not mandatory that you have that two-way communication and talk to anyone. But here's a tip. When you're flying, even though it's not mandatory, I highly encourage you to talk to someone anyway, because it's only going to help you perfect your radio communication skills. So a lot of things as you go throughout your pilot journey, you're going to understand that some things are optional, whether or not you get a VFR request and a variety of other things that we're going to review. A lot of these things can be optional at times, but you always want to take that option because these options are only going to help you become a better pilot. And this is one of those examples. It's not mandatory that you talk to anyone in class E airspace space, but it's only going to make you better if you do. So always take that option so you know you can perfect those radio communication skills and be on top of that thing. But you don't got to text her, baby, and you ain't got to talk to her if you don't really want to. She's stuck up like that, and she don't want to be hearing from you all the time talking about hi, 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 over and over again in her inbox. Numero tres of the most known things about Class E airspace is one big thing you want to understand about airspace in general is why it was even created in the first place. And this kind of gives you a little bit of perspective in understanding these various airspaces as you go through it. Have you ever stopped to wonder why there is even airspace to begin with? Why do we have certain categories? Why they don't just let people just fly all over the place, in and out of things all willy-nilly like that? The reason why there's airspace to begin with is to keep you safe and protected. Is to keep the flights that can't see because they may be flying instrument to those that can see from those who are flying on visual flight routes. To keep people separated and keep distance from one another. That's one of the main primary reasons of airspace in general, to protect you as a pilot. So if you fully understand this, it helps you understand each of the categories and each of the classes of airspace because you understand this was put into place to protect me because you don't want to be flying at like a class G kind of airspace in that visual flight rules. Think about the previous video. If you haven't watched that, I strongly encourage you to watch the five must know things about class G airspace. You don't want to be just chilling in VFR flight and then all of a sudden someone comes out of the clouds and they right up on top of you because there's no separation of space because you were flying at those VFR minimums and everything was being within the legal limits, but at the same time, it was just too close to call. So what do you do? You create another airspace and create that second degree of separation and make the flight and weather requirements a little bit more stringent in a certain airspace to have a protective layer. So if you understand that premise and understand that concept, it'll help you not only understand Class E, but all of the airspaces in general as to why they're there to begin with. It's there for your protection. And that's one of the reasons why the weather requirements in Class E are what they are, different than those, of course, in some cases of other airspaces like Class G and others that may be listed. Number cuatro! What are those weather requirements when flying VFR in Class E airspace? It's the infamous and universal three 152, and a great way to remember this, we went over this in the pre previous video, but I'll reiterate it here. 3152 is a common nomenclature that you're gonna to wanna to learn. An easy way to remember that, and when we're talking about 3152, we're talking about three miles of vis visibility, 1,000 feet above the clouds, 500 feet below the clouds, and of course, 2,000 feet horizontal from the clouds. 3152, an easy way to remember that. In aviation, there's a popular Cessna 152 aircraft. So you remember that number, Cessna 152. You associate that number with aviation. That helps you remember the code. Then you're thinking to yourself, I know the numbers, the 152, the 3152, but I don't know what order they go in. Just think about A, B, C. Above, below, across. 3152, 1,000 feet above, 500 feet below, 2,000 feet across. That is your VFR requirements in Class E airspace. But if you're above 10,000 feet, you 10 bands up, woo, you're doing that thing, then the requirements change up on you a little bit. If you 10 racks up, baby, the requirements gonna change on you a little bit. It's gonna be five statue miles of visibility, 1,000 feet above the clouds, 1,000 feet below the clouds, and of course, one mile horizontal from the clouds, making sure you're nice and clear of those clouds as you're chilling and flying through class E because she waited everywhere because she for the streets, baby. Numero cinco, 
There are different types of Class E airspace, and you want to know each and every type of Class E airspace out there so you're well equipped and well prepared for each of your flights. Whenever you go through aviation and your aviation and pilot journey, whenever you have to remember something, you start and always ask yourself that usually one or two things that you can use to remember something. A checklist, which are very common in the, in the world of aviation, as well as some sort of acronym or some sort of word to kind of help you memorize things. What you want to memorize for the different types of Class E airspace is the word set voda set voda that's s-e-t-v-o-d-a that acronym is going to let you know every single type of class e airspace the first letter of set voda is s of course and that stands for service that's going to let you know that class e starts at the surface and that's usually indicated nice and plain and clear with that dash magenta line on your sectional chart boom easy to remember dash magenta line class e airspace it starts where at the surface when you're inside that line Next up on the list for E in set voter is going to be extension. You may not see that full dash circle. It may just be a regular airspace, maybe a D or some other airspace, and it may just have a little box. That's like an extension. That's what you want to remember with set voter, the, number, the letter E for extension. Same rules apply. It's protecting, again, what, why airspace is created to protect people, protecting those IFR approaches coming in inside that extension. That's why it's there. That's why it's a designated space. And that's what you want to remember with E for set voter. It's for extension. T in set voter stands for transition area. And that's depicted by the nice thick, thick magenta line on your sectional chart. Thick, like your biceps. So that thick magenta line, and it indicates that class E starts at 700 AGL. So if it's that dash magenta line, where does it start? At the surface. That's S in set voter. If it's the T, talking about that transition area, then where does it start? It starts to transition at 700 feet AGL. Boom! The B in set voter stands for Victor Airways, and that is, of course, instrument flying only in those Victor Airways. All that is designated for instrument flying, and that is, in fact, Class E airspace. The O in set voter stands for offshore. And if you refer to the previous video in the five must-know things about Class G airspace, we talked about those little pieces of airspace that looks like one of the Michael Jackson jackets with all them zippers on it, them blue zipper lines floating through it. That is class E as well. And the altitude requirements are usually noted right up on them zippers. So when you're looking at those Michael Jackson, it's Thriller A. It got the altitude noted on the blue zipper of what that is. And of course that is class E airspace. The D for set voter stands for domestic en route, which basically means everywhere. And why is Class E everywhere? Because she for the streets. So everywhere from 1200 AGL all the way up on to 17, 9, 9, 9 MSL, you have, of course, Class E airspace. Unless otherwise depicted on your sectional chart. And lastly, the A in set VOTA stands for above. Because above 14,000 MSL, everything becomes Class E unless otherwise depicted on your sectional chart. So memorize that acronym, SET VOTA, and it'll tell you every distinct category of Class E airspace that you must know. Well equip yourself with this. Again, if you're trying to memorize anything, it's fun little tricks like the 3152 with the 152 and the Cessna and the ABC thing. And for something like this, SET VOTA. You're gonna need these little things. These kind of memorization tricks, in addition to, of course, checklists, can help you remember the information that you need to remember, whether it's requiring airspace or anything else you need to know in the world of aviation. Make it fun, make it good to learn, and of course, keep it memorized and keep you safe in the sky. These are five things you must know about Class E airspace. Rated E for everywhere, baby. If I missed anything, please hit the comment section down below and each one teach one. Comment down below. I want to know your thoughts about Class E. Do you fly out of a Class E? Have you had any fun experiences in dealing, transitioning in and out of Class E airspace? I am Donovan Batiste. Hey, don't forget to like this video, comment, and subscribe to this channel. I am Donovan Batiste. Hey, this is Leadership Mindset. Big whoa. Subscribe to the channel for more pilot talk, leadership, and self-improvement tips. Rated E for elegance.